May we um, still ourselves as we come in. Take a deep breath as we've maybe rushed from outside. And this day as we come to worship, may we remember that it doesn't matter that our lives or our families or the world are not perfect. What matters is that we make a space, no matter how small, for God in our hearts this morning. When we do that, God will do the rest, and Christ will once more be born in the Bethlehem of our lives and the mangers of our hearts. May it be so this morning as we prepare to worship. We light this candle as a symbol of God's love for us and our love for one another. For all. God rejoice over us with gladness and renews us in love. The angels will shout. For the Lord is coming to turn our hearts toward singing and praise. Come, Lord Jesus, come.
The Lord be with you. So good morning. Um, I'm Denise Diab, an associate pastor here at Bradley Hills, and I want to welcome all of you this morning. Whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're worshiping with us online, those of you who are visiting with us, whether for the first time or maybe more than once, we welcome you too and want to make your acquaintance. Um, I want you to feel um, like how we go into uh, maybe some favorite uh, um, coffee shop of yours where when you walk in the door, they, they just say welcome or good morning and know your name and know which beverage you fix. So, um, so welcome and we want to um, hope that you enjoy worshiping with us this morning. One of the things that I'd like to point out, which is something new, is if you look at the back of your bulletin, there is a QR code. This is totally new. So you know that oftentimes when we have the PDF version of the bulletin and you're at home and it says you can click on something to take you to a link, if you uh, use the QR code on your uh, phone, now you can actually click on that link. It will activate it, allow you to do clicking, to uh, sign up for things, to actually enlarge the screen that you're using, the picture on the screen. And so if any of you aren't really familiar with that and want to uh, get some more information, some support and help with using the QR code, please contact our new uh, Director of Communications and Administrative Ministries, Elizabeth Bullock, and she will uh, assist you with that. And in fact, next week I'll ask her to put a link for herself so that you can click on that and get in touch with her uh, that way for yourself. So children, when we get ready to do the children's hour, I want you to, or the children's message, could you please now, if you brought the ornament that you took home to prepare, to make, to share, if you would kind of get that ready and bring it up with you when you come to the chancel, um, Matt will uh, let you know what we're going to do with that this morning. So children, please prepare yourself. And those of you who are online, um, we, we hope that you'll enjoy doing what we're going to do this morning as well. Um, so there will be a reception, many of you know, for, um, for to celebrate the, my installation. And so that will take place at, uh, after the service, immediately after. And I invite you uh, personally to please stop by and make sure that I can greet you if I haven't met you yet, or I'm not sure of your name because we've been masking. Please make sure you remind me of who you are and I'm looking forward to meeting as many of you as possible today. Some of the announcements many of you know from um, the prayer chain and from other announcements that have been made that David is away today because um, his father had a stroke this week and he is now out of ICU and is progressing well, better each day. Um, so he still has a ways to go and he's uh, unable to, to, to actually talk right now, but uh, he is making progress. So we continue to ask your prayers for David's father and for his family um, as they go through this time of uh, assisting his father as far as his healing and complete recovery. So I will call your attention to some of the announcements in the bulletin, but um, not all of them, so please make sure that you take the bulletin and read it. Uh, first, I'd like to call attention to the three Christmas Eve services that we will have. Last year, we weren't able to do our traditional children's pageant. That will take place here in the sanctuary at 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and then we'll have our traditional services at 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. We know that this is a time of celebration and joy uh, during this season of the year. However, for some and many of us, it can be also a very challenging time if this has been a year of loss, of loss of loved ones, of transitions in our lives or seasons of our lives. And so we want to acknowledge where all of us are at this particular time. So we are having our traditional Blue Christmas services, uh, one at noon on this Wednesday, December the 14th, here in the sanctuary, and it'll be in the columbarium, and then also at 7.30 p.m. So we welcome all and want to be able to share with one another our love and comfort during this season of the year. Now next Sunday, we are having our annual 
Christmas potluck brunch. So it'll be the first time for me to experience that and I'm looking forward to it. So we encourage you to sign up so that we can make uh, adequate preparations for all those who will be attending. Uh, if you sign up, look in the bulletin to know which uh, alphabet you should, I mean, use your last name as the alphabet to tell you what to bring, uh, main dish, side dish, salad, or dessert. And one of the other things is that we still need people to help clean up. So I, I really encourage if you're available to just stay just even a few minutes to just help clean up. It, it, it's uh, many hands make light work. And so we um, want to encourage you to help, uh, help us with that. There are still opportunities for Advent devotions on Tuesday and Thursday at 12 p.m. in the sanctuary uh, and then online on Tuesday in the sanctuary on Thursday. And then our olive oil uh, sales and chocolates will be in the gathering space as well as opportunities to continue to sign up for uh, wider up uh, gift giving and, and our alternative gifts. And so I hope most of you um, may have had the opportunity to hear all about alternative gifts during our adult education class today. And if you did not, it'll be online because it was recorded. So when you get the Tuesday update, then you can click and um, actually see it if you did not have the opportunity to see it this morning. So that concludes our announcements this morning. And I, again, invite you to look at the announcements um, and what all is happening in the life of our church in the bulletin. So we will now, again, take a deep breath still ourselves as we prepare for our prayer of adoration and confession. So our adorate, prayer of adoration and confession will say in unison, which will be followed by a period of silence for our own personal prayers. I invite you to join me. You are near, O Lord, yet in your presence we confess our need for repentance. We have not lived in peace with you or your creation. We have not trusted your word and live with fear. Forgive us, restore us, turn our shame into praise. We pray for the sake of the one who brings good news. good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
my goodness, look at all of you. Summer visitors. Oh, it is so nice to see all of you. Good morning. Well, this is the third Sunday of Advent. And if you might remember, a couple of weeks ago, Amar Amaryllis asked us, what does the pink candle stand for? So, Amaryllis, you want to come up here with me? I have an envelope that has your name on it. I also got cards. You do? Well, may I hold your card? So can you open the envelope and tell us what's in there? This? Yes, and does it say anything on it? Yes. What does it say? Joy. Can you say it real loud? It is for joy. It is for joy. So the whole, you want to walk down and show everybody? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so the pink card and the pink candle is for joy. And what happens at Christmas is that we rejoice, that we're very happy that Christ is being born in the world. And if you look at the card, you'll see that the joy kind of, it doesn't color inside the lines. You know, sometimes we're taught to color inside the lines, but joy just burst out all over everywhere. So we want you to be joyful this season. And Amaryllis, thank you so much for being willing to share with us this morning what the pink candle stands for. And now Matt will help us be joyful more so. So if you were at the Christmas tree lighting last uh, Sunday, last week, and you brought your ornament with you, I see some of us. So everyone is going to get a chance to bring one of these Christmas ornaments home. They're these really easy ornaments that you make at home, and then you're going to bring it back to church, either next Sunday, or you can bring it back on Christmas Eve, or you could even bring it back on Christmas Day, because Christmas Day is Sunday, and we're going to decorate the trees behind you. We're going to decorate the trees with these ornaments. So if you brought one today, if you didn't bring one today, that's okay. I'm going to give you one today, and you get to take it home and bring it back next week. If you brought one today, then I want you to follow me. Only if you brought one today, I want you to follow me, and we're going to hang our ornaments on this tree. We're going to walk around this way. So if you brought one, come over here with me, right? That's you. That's you. That's you. That's you. And we're gonna, oh, and you brought yours too. All right, we're gonna hang them on this tree right here. And you can choose where you wanna hang it on this tree. I brought Oliver's also. Oh, great, you can hang Oliver's too. Great, you guys can hang that and then you can rejoin us. And then I'm gonna give everybody one of these ornaments. And so when I say go in peace, after we pray, when I say go in peace, you are going to take your ornament back to your mom and dad or whoever brought you here today and then you can come to church school it's going to be great and in church school we're going to hear more about advent oh you already did <laughs> all right so here we go um, i'm going to keep passing them out after we pray okay i'm going to keep passing them out after we pray let's pray together will you pray with me Let's pray. Shh. I'm going to keep passing them out. Say, loving God, thank you for the joy candle. Thank you for the joy you bring. Help us to share that joy with everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, now when I say go in peace, if you already have your ornament, Bring it to your parents, and then come to church school. If you don't have an ornament yet, I will give you one. Ready? Go in peace.
A reading from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being with him is life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The second lesson is from the third chapter of Genesis, verses 8 through 14. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid. I was naked and hid myself. 
He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life.
a reading from chapter 22, Genesis, verses 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves because you have obeyed my voice.
A reading from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together. And the little child shall lead them.
fifth lesson is from the first chapter of Luke, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting that might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. You, therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Oh, 
I invite you to uh, take the red booklets that are on the edge of each pew and um, register your attendance here today along if you're visiting any information that we may use to contact you. As I said, we really welcome our visitors and want to make sure that we make every effort to make you feel welcome and provide information about Bradley Hills and how um, you might continue to worship with us. At this time, may we joyfully bring our gifts and offerings uh, according to how God has blessed us. May the ushers please come forward.
may be seated. So this is the time in the service where we offer our prayers. Um, and I just want to, again, lift up um, David's father um, so that we offer prayers for him. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we offer prayers for the uh, prayers and condolences for the family and friends of Paul Lewis, who passed away this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we continue to offer prayers for um, those who are named in our bulletin and those who are unnamed, who are named in our hearts. And so prayers of concern for those who are ill, for those who are receiving or recovering from surgery, from those who are having procedures this week um, and recovering from illnesses. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We especially pray for those in our community who are, Lord, um, in the midst of transitions in life, in the seasons of their life. So please guide them as, um, and support them as they go through these changes. We pray for those who are facing critical decisions, Lord, that they receive wisdom. And for all of your creatures, for our air, for the water, for the soil, all of those resources that you have provided us, Lord, please help us to treat them with goodness and um, economy so that they are available to those of our posterity. And please also bless our cities, our neighborhoods, all people, the leaders of other countries, that all people have peace and fairness in their lives. And for the work of your church, we ask that you bless the church so that we may show and tell the good news of Jesus. And that those here at Bradley Hills in our local church, that we have the mind of Christ in facing special issues. And then Lord, in this Advent season, as we embrace the love and joy that Christ brought to the world, please give us the grace, your grace, and your assurance as we struggle maybe with our faith issues, and the mystery of Christ's coming. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and wanting, unwilling to expose her to disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And the angel said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what had been written and spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us.
have a choral uh, musical benediction, but in terms of the charge, it's amazing to me how life just provides us with what our charge is. So when I came up to do um, the prayer of that, you know, the prayer of the people, the candle I had been noticing, it had started to dim, and it had been dimming and diminishing through the whole service. So I don't know how many of you noticed. But they're always maintained this little flicker. And so as we were telling, as uh, Amaryllis was saying that this pink candle stands for joy, then it came to me then that um, the candle was not going to go out. And it continued, it was just the most faint uh, still flame. And so I, I charge you to take those flames with you, even if they're just tiny sparks of joy, that they, they, they are contagious because somehow in some mystery, I don't know if somebody came and lit it or it just reburst itself. It'll be a mystery to me, but it shows us that our joy is contagious and that as Pat said in the very first scripture that the light refused to be put out, that the darkness could not cover it. So I charge you, go into this sometimes very dark world and be the light, be the joy, be that flicker that refuses to be put out. And so, please uh, give the peace of Christ to someone around you or who you haven't spoken with today yet. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> so, uh, may the peace of Christ be with you.